I'm Neil and this is Photo How To, a dedicated channel just for photography. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how I shot this. I'm gonna take you through the process of how I actually shot this, including my camera settings, and most importantly, issues that I face when I try to capture this. Thank you for subscribing to my channel, really do appreciate it. I am working on a series of videos to do with camera tutorials, camera settings, being out in the field and sort of problems that you're gonna face, just to inspire your inner creativity and get you guys out there shooting, because photography, let's be honest, it just simply amazing and I absolutely I need to talk to you about a few points just before we dive straight in there. The first one is your camera may or may not have this option built within its menu. I am using Nikon mirrorless cameras. For this shoot, I use the Nikon Z9, which did have this feature, but please, before you go out and try this, just scroll through your menus and double check that you've got this option. If you haven't, there are other ways of doing this, which I will hopefully cover in a future video. If you do have this feature, I'm gonna go through it very, very very shortly how I created this we're going to look at the menu so very very quickly what is multiple exposure basically what you're doing is you're telling your camera that you want to take a series of photographs that you've selected and then what it's going to do is it's going to merge them in together really clever technology to create one final image the other thing I should add is that this is very much trial and error you're going to go out there and you are going to get it wrong initially finding the right camera settings is probably the key component you can select the right elements within in the menu and tell your camera what you want it to do, but you really need to also control the environment that you're shooting in, so you must select the right camera settings. This is really important, and I'm gonna go through this also. Okay, so this is the standard Nikon mirrorless camera menu. Uh, we're gonna go into the photo shooting menus first. Okay, you're gonna scroll down. To be honest, you might wanna scroll up because it might be quicker, but if you scroll down, it goes down a couple of pages, and it's found underneath the options for like focus mode, area mode, etc. Okay, we're gonna click on there and then as you can see we now have this sub menu it's actually turn multiple exposure on just so that we get all these options available so if you select on single photo what will happen is when you go to do your shoot it will do the series of photographs and then it will go back to turning multiple exposure off and you'll be back to shooting normally so if you know you're only going to be doing this once go for this option do decide that you're going to be shooting more than once you want to select on series now I I must add this is important this is going to stay on until you go back into the menu and turn it off if you're doing your shoot what I would highly recommend is when you finish doing multiple exposure go in and turn it off because next time you go to use your camera you'll be shooting away and you'll be thinking what the hell is going on here you <laughs> <laughs> all your photographs are blurred. Okay, we come back out and then we go back to this little menu again. We're gonna go down and select the number of shots. When I first started doing this, I started to shoot at 10, 10 shots. I thought that looks awesome. It's gonna have you know, 10 batsmen swinging through the air or 10 bowlers. If I'm really honest, it looks a mess. It was too much, it was overpowering on the eye. Uh, so I think sometimes, this is why I'm saying it is trial and error. It may work or it may not. Start off with 10 and then by all means reduce it. it I would probably recommend starting in the middle of five and then obviously you can either reduce or increase it, that's up to you. But again, it's a little bit trial and error because at the end of the day, these type of photographs, I mean, this is one of the beauties of being a photographer. You're either gonna love your photographs or you're gonna hate them. But not everyone's gonna like your photographs. So I think it's really important to get it right how you like it. Um, so yeah, just have a few goes, see what's the best option for you and then select that. That is it, <laughs> believe it or not, that is as simple as that. Well, I say it's as simple as that, it's not. You've got to get your camera settings right and obviously your composition, etc. But that is it. These last three options, overlay mode, um, you want to leave this on average initially. Just leave it on average. That nine times out of 10, that has worked for me. Obviously, if you go into this menu, you've got the option to darken or lighten it. Uh, but I've, I've left it on average most of the time and it tends to work really well. Save individual images. Basically what you're telling your camera is whether you want to save some raw images as well as the JPEG or if you just want to save just JPEG. I tend to leave this on because sometimes you'll be shooting fast shutter speed and you've merged your images together and you thought, yeah, that looks all right. But it may be a shot in there. You thought, you know, that batsman or that sportsman, oh, that was fantastic, that was amazing. I wish I just had a single shot, a normal photograph of that. Well, now you've got that option, so you get the best of both worlds. And obviously, overlay shooting is, well, merging them in pretty much, so that's what you're doing. So when you've taken your series of shots and your cameras merge these together, what you will get 
which you will not get a raw file. I can't stress how important this is that I get this across to you guys. I was expecting a raw file. You don't get a raw file, you get a JPEG. The size of the JPEG is still quite big, uh, so it's still quite detailed, which is really good. Me personally, I'm a little bit disappointed. I would like to have had a raw file. I don't know why that doesn't happen. I don't know if that happens in the other cameras. Please put a comment down below if it does, but with Nikon mirrorless cameras, it doesn't do it. You get a JPEG. Beggars can't be choosers, I suppose, but yeah, I was a little bit disappointed with that, but yeah, it's just the way it goes. But image still looks really cool so I've got to be happy. Okay, the next thing you're gonna do is you're shooting action or sports photography, so you're gonna want a fast shutter speed. That's really important. Set your camera up as if you were gonna shoot whatever you're shooting normally. Part of me when I first did this in my head said reduce it down because it looks like a ghosting sort of effect, so you need a slow shutter speed. You don't, that's a mistake. Don't do that. You wanna be shooting with a fast shutter speed to capture the motion and let the camera then merge it in. Now, I took a few shots here on a slow shutter speed. I was shooting around about a fifth to a thirtieth of a second, and you can see it just looks well. It looks like a mess, if I'm honest. It looks atrocious. These are the sort of shots I'm just gonna delete, and they'll, they'll be off my computer when this video is finished, but I just wanted to keep them just to show you what it looks like if you shoot too slow. So you're gonna be shooting depending on what your subjects and how fast they're moving. In this instance, I was shooting cricketers. Let's be honest, cricketers aren't rapid. They're not Olympic sprinters, but they're still going fast enough. So I'm shooting about 2,000 to 4,000 of a second. I tend to reduce my aperture as wide as possible, depending on the lens I'm using. I was using a 180 to 600 mil Z series lens. Um, that only allows me to go down to 6.3, but to be honest, that worked out really, really well. If yours do go lower, 2.8 for example, drop it right down. Just lets in more light, and basically it means then you don't have to increase your ISO, and then you'll have less noise in your shot. The other thing also, which I must stress, this is one's quite important, turn auto ISO off. Why turn auto ISO off? Simple, you need to control the light on your background. This really works well when you've got a dark backdrop. So you're gonna need to move your feet. At the end of the day, if whatever you're shooting, unless you, you've set it up, so then, you know, whether you're doing a portrait shoot and it's all staged, etc. with this sport, you can obviously move them around to suit you best. You want them against a dark backdrop. But if you're there watching a game of football, for example, you can't go on the pitch and tell the football, oh, can you mind going over there for me? It's a bit darker over there, it's a better backdrop. That doesn't work. So you're gonna to need to move your feet to get your composition and make sure they're against a dark backdrop. But why a dark backdrop? It's light. You are capturing light. Whatever it is, you're capturing that going through the shot. Well, something that light will always stand out against something that's dark. So having a darker background will work better for you. With a lighter background, as you're seeing in these couple of images here, it, it, it's, it's lost. You can't really tell what you're shooting, what the subject matter is, you're guessing. If I'm really critical, I'm gonna bring this image back up again. I'm gonna now critique my own image. If I'm really honest, you guys, by all means, critique it, put a comment down below. We all look at things differently. I must stress that, you're gonna hear me say that throughout my videos, we all see things differently, and that is the beauty of photography. But, I'm, <laughs> there's one thing I'm really disappointed with this. I set up originally to shoot off a tripod because I wanted the foreground and the background all to be in focus. I'm shooting cricket, and apologies for my terminology, I don't follow cricket, but the stumps, I don't know what they call the wicket, stumps, I wanted them to be in focus. Okay, so I wanted to shoot off a tripod. Now the problem I had was, if we look at the bowler for example, the bowler's running, okay, and then when he goes to release the ball, which is the key moment, you're trying to capture the key moment if you're shooting sports photography. That key moment, it could be a big bone crunching slide tackle, it could be a moment of rugby player diving through the air to get a try. In this instance, I want the moment the bowler goes to release the ball. But what was happening was he was overlapping with the other batsmen or fielders. So again, I'm moving my feet. Well, if you're shooting off a tripod, that is pretty, well, it's almost impossible. And it was the same with a batsman. Now the batsman's there, it is pretty much static. So yeah, you can move to an extent. Obviously, <laughs> the issue I really had was that it was the fielders. No, I'm gonna be honest, it was the fielders. They were moving, which obviously they're playing their sport, which is what they're supposed to do. But they were getting in my way and I was getting really frustrated because I wanted to get this photograph, but yeah. So what happens then is you get a mess. You, you get 
two or three bodies coming together and it just looks like a colour blast. Like a rainbow's basically exploded across the screen. That's not what I wanted. If you can shoot off a tripod, I highly recommend it. And what I would do is manually focus on something that is within the shot. In this instance, I would have liked to have manually focused on the stumps. Then I know that the rest of the shot would have been in focus. As they pass through, I would have had motion. And that's what you're trying to capture. You're trying to capture that motion going through the shot. Don't get me started on the weather. Oh. <laughs> One minute is bright, then it goes dark, and then we get big, strong gusts of wind. I mean, so we're really up against it now, and you've got to tailor your shooting and your camera settings to what the weather's doing. Especially the light, because the light keeps changing. Now you're sitting there thinking, well, the light keeps changing, put all our ISO on. But if you put auto ISO on, your background's gonna get blown out, it's gonna be too bright, and then you're not gonna see what you're doing. So you've gotta be on the ball a little bit with your settings. So this is what I'm saying, trial and error. Keep trying, keep shooting. For this shot that I took, it took me 20 attempts, probably over 20 attempts, to get it right. So don't be afraid. Digital cameras are fantastic. If you've got a good memory card, nice big memory card, you can take thousands of photographs. It isn't gonna matter. At the end of the day, you just delete the ones you don't want. Take loads of shots, because what you don't wanna do is just take a couple, go home, and then feel disappointed. One thing I really love about this feature is that all those countless hours working in Photoshop, trying to merge stuff, is just completely out the window. I can literally take a shot, go home, throw it into Adobe Lightroom, you can still work off a JPEG in there, make a few alterations, boom, within a couple of minutes you've got a shot, and you save all that time. So yeah, thank you Nikon, amazing. But I hopefully you've got these features on your camera. If you have got, get out there and give them a go. That's how I did it, that's how I took these shots. It's type of abstract photography, and it's something a little bit different, and I find doing these sort of things opens your mind a little bit more to the world, so when you are out there shooting, you become a little bit more creative rather than just pick your camera up, take the photograph and walk off. If you do have any questions regarding this video or any other camera settings, technical stuff, camera gear, throw a comment down below and I'll do my best to respond. Who knows, I might even do a video. Thank you for watching. Please feel free to subscribe. Don't forget to hit the notification bell because like I mentioned before, I'm working on a lot of videos. To the people.